Welcome back. Here we are, chapter six, part two, and we're going to continue on and figure out how genes work. And again, like uh, anything else in microbiology or genetics, let's say, uh, their terminology is really, really important. So let's let's review what a genotype and a phenotype. Genotype uh, is the genes. They are the genes that. Uh, an organism carries for a particular trait. A phenotype is the physical manifestation of whatever those genes expressions are and you can see them so pheno is what you see and genotype is the infrastructure or the DNA behind it that, that uh, created it. And so let's use some of these things uh, in our discussion. So the genes of the strand of DNA are storehouse. We already talked about that last time. So what I like an instruction book and genes of an organism carries for a trait we call it its genotype and the physical manifestations that we actually see are called the phenotype and so you assemble the ingredients mix them bake them and you make a cookie then you know that the ingredients were for the genotype and the end result of a cookie is what you see the phenotype uh, we also have uh, kind of a, a different way to look at it is uh, the terms that we need to, to really to get under our belt. So a genotype is the genetic code of the individual and a phenotype is the expression of that code and it's visible to others so it can be observed and it's just another way of saying the same thing. So how does a gene, a sequence of bases within that section of DNA affect the flower's color or shape of a nose and that sort of thing? Uh, there's really two of the steps that start the process. One is called transcription. There's really four, but uh, starts the transcription uh, is a copy of the gene's uh, base sequences are made. So it's, it's making a transcript. So we never use the original. If you remember the DNA analogy I had uh, with the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the parody I had about a company and assigning certain things. Miss Nucleolus's office, she's the CFO of the business, and the CEO keeps all of the originals of the uh, trademark information or the uniqueness of DNA in a safe. And it only is accessed for the ability to transcribe, in other words, photocopy, however you want to view the analogy. Uh, into something that, that is mutable that in other words you can make copies and with the copies and you can do whatever you want it's not going to damage or hurt in any way the original DNA so RNA transcription is the process by which we make a copy of that region of the DNA into something called messenger RNA and there's a little bit more sophistication that goes on that I don't want to shield you from I want to mention it but you can see uh, there's the DNA and we're kind of uh, using enzymes to kind of open it up a little bit and we're making the RNA transcript and it's just a complement strand of the segment of DNA that actually makes sense uh, the opposite strand is the one that doesn't make sense it's called the antisense strand but anyhow this one is the one that makes sense so we're going to make a complement now it's identical to the antisense strand if that makes sense to you that uh, is identical except it's now RNA so whenever uh, there's a uh, thymine um, well uh, thymine there will be a uracil, so A's and T's, so that would, would have been a T if it was DNA, you can see the T, but uh, it's uracil in RNA, so it's one of the differences of RNA, and it's ribonucleic acid instead of deoxyribonucleic acid, and so the chemical structure is yeah, slightly different, but the key is uh, knowing uracil is part of the RNA, and then that sequences are there. We have a five prime end and a three prime end. Now, I haven't gone over that much, but uh, the DNA uh, end here would be three prime 
and this end over here would be the five prime so his complement strand would be the five prime end and the three prime end so this if this is three prime then his complement strand would be five prime and so on so forth so and then we make caps and tails just to protect the messenger RNA from randomly being chewed up by just being in the environment it's single stranded it's really what they call labile it's sensitive to that and if you ever saw Mission Impossible uh, at least the old movies or the old TV show uh, here's your job if you decide to accept it and they tell them blah 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 whatever it is and then at the end the tape self destructs and so they got the message that they needed from that so no one else can watch it. Well, what's interesting, and I, I, I can't let it go without mentioning it, that the messenger RNA, once it's created, has a period of time before it does get chewed up. And so it's like two weeks or three weeks or something like that. But the, the, the system knows that it's not a permanent um, production. It's out there. It's good for about two to three weeks. And then before it gets too much damage, it's just chewed up and reused and recycled so all the bases are recycled so it can be added back here at that time but I just wanted to bring that up so as, as these things are made uh, they do have sort of a, a half-life if you want to think of it in other words it starts to, to degrade after a while and then if the body needs more or the system needs more it produces it knowing that it's out of circulation uh, later on the temporal and it's just a very interesting concept then once the messenger RNA is made then we translate that message uh, into uh, the protein that it was intended and we do this with transfer RNAs now I just wanted to pause for a moment. Uh, it's got a lot of gobbledygook of what's going on. I'm not going to have you learn all that detail. I just know that a ribosome is important to hold, and you can see the purple part, to hold the uh, transfer RNAs. Now, they are RNA, and they fold in a very strange way. You can see that there's a little arm here and an arm here, and then it has the uh, codon and anticodon region. So here's... Uh, the uh, codon and then the anticodon is the transfer RNA that binds to the codon region and it has to match perfectly within the three. No, it's, it's three bases. So it is what they call the triplet code. So those three translates to a particular amino acid and it's really interesting. First I'll let you know that it's here we have a, a basically a sugar system with RNA and then attached to the RNA is the amino acid which is the building blocks of a protein and if that uh, codon and anticodon match perfectly in other words the the bases uh, are, are matched there's a particular based on that sequence a particular amino acid that's been bound they call that charging the transfer RNA once the protein is taken off it's called uncharged transfer RNA and uh, it's, it's a, a whole nother story about how they get charged and the like, but they, they, they follow certain rules for this charging. So the anticodon always has, that sequence will always have the corresponding, the correct amino acid. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But for right now, I just want you to think about the structure of the transfer RNA. And so it's sort of like, now I know my son asked me what kind of games I played on my Xbox when I was his age. Well, we had um, two cups and a string, pretty much, is how it was when I grew up. We didn't have any of the fancy stuff. But one of the things we did do on cereal boxes, is we had decoder rings, and we could encode messages. And you would have to look up. Uh, it's, you know, here's, this one was numbers to letters. And, you, you know, if you had, you know, 2-2, two -two, then you look it up, and it would translate to a T. And you can see that they did that. And it was cool. I could send, you know, something funny to my friend without my parents reading it unless they had the, the particular decoder ring to figure out what the message was. And that's sort of how it's uh, done here. Uh, these are decode uh, regions, the three uh, bases that uh, make up, if they match, then it signifies the rib ribosome that it's going to fit. It goes in and then transfers the uh, amino acid to the growing chain that's forming that new protein. Now. Don't get panicky when you see this word peptide bond. Uh, 
Uh, technically, the name of a protein is a series of amino acids bound together with peptide bonds. It's peptides bound together. But usually you just hear about amino acids and then being linked together, and that's fine. It's sort of like a necklace. And we're building each bead as uh, the uh, transfer RNAs come in and uh, the ribosome helps facilitate the forming of those bonds, the, the peptide bonds to make the growing chain. So th that's kind of where we are and it uses the template of that messenger RNA as the, the master key or the master uh, sequence of those particular beads on that chain and that's how it's read and it's uh, it's being translated by the fact that the transfer RNA has the, the correct three uh, triplet code sequence and attached to it is a particular amino acid. And that is the translation from a chemical or a sugar system to one of protein. And it's the only example I know of in nature where we have this kind of translation going on. And it's phenomenal. Now, the structure of the ribosome is a little bit more complicated than what you you were just seeing as a blob of purple and it has as the messenger RNA is threaded through it the charge transfer RNA comes in if it happens to match it will bind to it really tight if it's a mismatch it can't quite get in close enough like you see here and it's bumped out until the correct match is made and when it does with that sequence you'll have the correct amino acid it goes into uh, the various this is the acceptor site this is the uh, particular P site where the amino acid is uh, added to the chain uh, through the peptide bond creating that new protein and then once it's been uh, assigned to that chain it's kicked out or it's an uncharged transfer RNA that has to be charged again in other words amino acid has to be added to it but that sequence of messenger RNA is exactly translated into the by amino acid by amino acid to a protein that uh, is needed by the system it's designed but uh, your book shows the same process using the analogy of the cookbook where if we have the DNA which we never use directly we only transcribe it so we make uh, a written copy in this case or it's, it's a copy it's a message RNA and then that is transported out uh, to the shop floor as we talked about before and we have the uh, rough ER the endoplasmic reticulum and we have the ribosomes bound to them and that is where the uh, transfer RNAs go in and carry in the particular amino acid builds the chain and then it's kicked out as uncharged and so that is making ultimately the cookie the end uh, ending uh, protein so that's the graphic 6-11 that's in your book it's a good one I mean I, you know me I love analogies and this is just an analogy that we used however uh, the details are there and it is, is it, as I, I mentioned it so we have uh, as summary genes and strands of DNA are storehouse of information which is great is amazing is not only for st structural but also if you recall regulation but for right now we're just talking about making proteins process by which information is used we transcribe it which we make a copy of that in the, in the form of messenger RNA and then we translate that in a triplet code using uh, transfer RNAs I meant transcription in the messenger RNA translation and it uh, utilizes a template of the messenger RNA but we have the transfer RNAs come in using that triplet code uh, to now produce that particular polypeptide which is a polyamino acid if you want to look at it that way uh, growing chain and so uh, we have transcription and translation as a process and you can see the overall uh, discussion you recognize and bond bind uh, the RNA polymerase to the um, uh, R uh, RNA polymerase recognize the promoter site of the DNA then it makes a transcription transcribes and forms that messenger RNA and then that messenger RNA uh, is uh, whatever sequence that we needed or that the, the length of it terminates and then uh, we cap and process that the messenger RNA so that it can be now going into the next step which is translation uh, but you can see uh, 
how important the RNA polymerase is at handling that uh, DNA. It has to sort of separate and realizes on one strand to make the uh, messenger RNA. It, to complement that DNA in messenger RNA, it changes the thymine to a uracil. Uh, which is the primary difference, but the sequence of the other strand of DNA would be identical to that of that messenger RNA, except it would be thymine in this strand of DNA, but it would be uracil in this strand of RNA. And I hope you followed me on that. It's pretty straightforward. So the first step of a two-step process, which DNA regulates in the cell's activity, the DNA is like a cookbook filled with recipes, transcription, translation, or like cooking. You use information about how to make chocolate chip cookies and you produce the cookies and the organism, the information uh, about that protein is used to build the proteins. And that's just the verbiage of what I was just saying before here, that uh, we recognize and bind the RNA polymerase, polymerizes or makes that messenger RNA from the template of the DNA. And uh, we go from three prime to five prime. So the complement strand is five prime to three prime. We'll talk more about that if you don't follow me. That's okay. So uh, recognizing and binding, and then you transcribe to make the copy strand. And uh, that's what you want to do because you don't want to use the original DNA. We want to make a copy of it. And then uh, the whole transcription process is uh, uh, we're, we're um, reviewing here, and then. Uh, we, the step three is we terminate the RNA polymerase, encounters a sequence of bases uh, called the termination, and it stops creating the transcript and detaches, and then you get this floating messenger RNA. And we need to further process it to put a cap on it to allow uh, the mechanism uh, machinery to bind to the messenger RNA to begin the translation process, and the tail to prevent it from getting chewed up. And we just put bunch of poly A's on the end there and uh, uh, adenines and just a whole trail of them and if it gets a little bit chewed up it doesn't matter because you're not into the, the key sequences down uh, that uh, were transcribed from the DNA. So the capping and editing is the one that's a little bit more interesting in eukaryotes because prokaryotes don't do this. In other words, bacteria, uh, once they go from the DNA to the uh, messenger RNA, it's red, red way. In eukaryotes, the messenger RNAs have to go through some extra processing. And this is um, it's interesting. This is where some of the regulation, it's why there's more DNA. Uh, that's actually used in regulation and, and not. But the intervening sequences, introns, you can see interspersed, the exons are the ones that are excised out to form the uh, mature message. And that's what the messenger RNA is in the eukaryotic system, are excised exons, leaving the introns behind. And so we have this, the, uh, the cap, the poly A tail, and then you have uh, the region in between that has what needs to be done as far as making the protein. I hope you followed me on that. You can go back and play it again uh, to follow, follow along. But I have a summary here. Transcription is the first step in the two-step process of producing proteins based on instructions. In transcription, which occurs in the nucleus, a single copy of one specific gene of the DNA is made in the form of messenger RNA. And then the messenger RNA is uh, moved into the cytoplasm uh, where it can be translated into a polypeptide using, you know, the, uh, the endoplasmic reticulum uh, uh, region there that we've talked about before. So we're translating, again, just looking at uh, the big the anti-sense strand making the RNA transcript there's the sense strand it would make sense because uh, this sense strand is ultimately what the messenger RNA is becoming except instead of thymines it would have uracils but that is the RNA transcript translating into the uh, who we are and there you go here's the key the, the triplet code matching with a particular corresponding amino acid now I'm going to show you what this lookup table is in terms of using your decoder ring, but uh, this particular transfer RNA has UGC, and that translates 
to having a properly charged transfer RNA with threonine, this amino acid, uh, at the top. So in the codon region, the anticodon is here, the codon region ACG on the messenger RNA would mean from the DNA side that it expects a threonine to be placed there. And that's in fact what the translator molecule, the transfer RNA, is doing. And it provides that. Now, where does this information come from? Well, we have the, the, uh, the three codes, uh, the triplet code, uh, UUU, UUC, uh, is phenylalanine. Now, right off the bat, you should notice that the first two, UU, uh, and then the last one is called the wobble position. Uh, that, for the most part, determines that particular amino acid. Now, let me follow me on this. UUU is phenylalanine, UUC, so it's a degenerate code. In other words, UUU and UUC on the uh, anticodon of that uh, transfer RNA will put a phenylalanine at that position, where UUA and UUG will put a leucine. So the third position in that triplet code is really the determiner for uh, which of the amino acids are placed. Now, the first two can change, CU, but this one has CUU, CA, and G, all beginning with that CU part transfers leucine. Then there's isoleucine, there's A, A, U, A, U, uh, uh, C, A, U, A, isoleucine. And then the start codon, A, U, G, this always starts at the very beginning of that messenger RNA. So this signals the ribosome that this is where we're starting. So it's sort of like a little flag on this one. So this one's kind of used as a uh, message or a uh, 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 position that uh, either tells us to start or stop. So it's a signal of some kind. And there's only really four that uh, do that. And we have uh, these uh, three stop codons here. I will talk about that in a minute. So as you go through, you can see GU and then the third wobble position. Any of the positions will create a valine or UC with any of the, the third position would be a serine and so on. Some of them uh, are parsed a little bit more with CAU and CAC is histidine. Now I'm going to have you memorize this. There's always a table that you can look up. And anyhow, but all of life uses the same decoder ring. Now let me repeat that. This decoder ring is the same for all living things. So what does that kind of say? That we have a, a snail and a sperm whale, which are totally different things. I think you would agree with me. But its DNA uses the same lookup. So if they're independent organisms that just spontaneously formed on their own, why would they use the same lookup table? Um, anyhow, if you're interested in, in uh, giving me your theory on that, I'd love to read it. You can just send that to me. Uh, AC vinyl at, at uh, wakeTech.edu. I'd love to hear what you got to say, but uh, for the most part, 99.9% uh, .9 because in science there's always an exception. One of these could be it could have a methyl group on it or something like that, a slight modification. Well, Dr. B, it's slightly different. Well, not really, but anyhow, uh, you can try to make that argument. But for the most part, all of life uses this lookup table birds to worms to bacteria uh, you name it and there we go and so uh, not to belabor the point so just remember the third position uh, the third one in is usually is the one that wobbles and uh, dictates uh, the amino acid it could be all it could be u c a g all for proline but again u c with a c a u c a c is histidine where um, CAA and CAG is glutamine, having the same first two, but the third one wobbled, uh, providing two different types of amino acids being charged onto that transfer RNA. So anyhow, um, we have a better looking chart here, I guess you could say. Uh, it's the same thing, identical, but it just uh, um, it, it puts it in an easy format that you can see. Uh, the position so you could use whatever chart I always provide those for you if I wanted you to translate some DNA 
So the translation process is really straightforward. It's held together by a two uh, piece of a ribosome and uh, the top part and the bottom part kind of snap onto the messenger RNA and it kind of slides through. And as the transfer RNAs come in, reading in groups of three, the codon and the anticodon, uh, it's adding uh, the proper amino acid. If it matches, like you see here, then isoleucine will be added onto the chain and so on and so forth. And until it gets to a stop sequence and that tells the ribosome it needs to drop off. Now, uh, we have these ribosomes are clamped onto messenger RNAs at multiple places. So it's not just doing it linearly, it's doing it multiple times. And uh, it's quite amazing um, that all this occurs. If you look at the transfer RNA, and it's doing the translation where you have the anticodon with a specific region. Now the third position can wobble and uh, dictate. So um, if it's got GA, here's, um, there's no more GAs, but uh, we talked about that already. But the key is that the proper amino acids added to the three prime end of that uh, transfer RNA. And so it would come in bind. So that is by, by the uh, definition, it is the molecule that does the decoding. And so if it has a particular sequence here, then it's charged with the right amino acid to match that sequence as according to that uh, table I showed you uh, to produce the proper protein. And we have to do it that way or the translation will come up with gobbledygook. If I didn't do my, trans my um, decoder ring properly from my best friend I grew up with, he would get garbled messages, which would be of no use, and he'd laugh at me and then, of course, tell everyone at school, but I won't go into that. Um, but if it's translated properly, then uh, all sorts of messages could be conveyed, and no one else would know it unless you had a decoder ring that was used, and that's the case here. And we can build uh, the proteins using the 20 amino acids that are available uh, in the system to uh, form proteins. So if you go into the details, I included that into the uh, slide set, you recognize and initiate protein binding and it's uh, everything I've already told you. Uh, the start sequence and the transfer RNA has the right amino acid bound to uh, the other end. And because it's the codon, anti-codon fitting, uh, then it builds that link of amino acids forming that protein. Uh, the form that specialized uh, function. Now, I give, I've given you some separate drawings just to know that there's a sequence of that transfer RNA and it gives you that structure by binding of that uh, RNA to itself, forming this 3D structure of that RNA. That's why the transfer RNA has that particular two loops, uh, three loops structure and then the uh, acceptor stem for the particular amino acid. When that's added, it's called the what? It's charged once it's added. And then the anticodon, it has to match the codon perfectly in order now to add that particular amino acid to the growing chain. And so you can see in this diagram, which is a little bit simpler, but we're going from a charged transfer RNA to an uncharged one as it goes through the system. And it's adding on uh, the polypeptides or the polyamino acids uh, every step of the way. So you have the acceptor site, the uh, protein adding stage, and then the exit stage over here, the E, and the movement of the ribosome. And so that's pretty much it. That's the... Uh, the key to what's going on. Uh, the messenger RNA again uh, proceeds building the uh, uh, the strand of amino acids. We call that the elongation stage where it just keeps building and building until it gets a stop message and then the uh, ribosome falls off and you've got your mature protein. And so you can see the amino acids and each of the R groups dictate what that particular amino acid is. But uh, for our stand purposes, we know that there's 20 different ones. But as far as the transfer RNAs, it matched the codon, anti-codon, and that's where the uniqueness of the chain um, comes from, just because it's matching the proper um, amino acid for that codon that's used in the messenger RNA. I hope you followed me on that, but uh, that is the translation process. So you could review the slides 
and uh, a terminate eventually ribosome uh, arrives at the three base sequence uh, and where there's a stop message and uh, that's the end of it. I have a video that you can play hopefully if not uh, yeah I think it just takes a little while for it to load up but in my slide set you can play it the sound effects if you listen to your arm let's put your ear up to your arm you can hear this no I'm just joking the transfer RNA uh, are these things flying in and out that's the messenger RNA and so here's the growing polypeptide chain or the polyamino acid chain there and it's all being added by the, the triplet code as it goes in and the transfer RNAs you can see charged and uncharged transfer RNAs floating around and if the right one fits then it builds the chain and it goes through and it sounds like a machine and that's the point that they wanted so you can see if I were to slice away part of the ribosome you can see the transfer RNAs coming in and then delivering each of the amino acids isn't that amazing that the system can do this I mean a hundred trillion cells that this is going on and it's like a machine it's like a little nano uh, machine that's going on just stamping out protein and um, you can watch that at your leisure uh, uh, as we go along here so uh, really interesting and, and the slides are there for your enjoyment so each protein is designed to work in other words that sequence that unique sequence that's that intelligent design or however you want to put it uh, in the DNA is translated properly and faithfully then it's going to fold as a relationship of each of the amino acids now each of the amino acids has a unique R group uh, that that side chain so here we had a CH CH3 CH3 on that particular amino acid somewhere else in the chain has the same uh, by dictate of the DNA and these have hydrophobic interactions so that causes that protein to, to fold a little bit or having a disulfide bridge and that makes a little bit of a stronger link and holding uh, in position so all of these amino acids have information that causes it to fold in the right way remember this is in a liquid environment and the subtle charges it's it's slowly going to to fold in the way it was designed to fold and ultimately you'll get your 3d shape and so the initial sequence uh, we're going to go over this when we go in proteins as the primary sequence the secondary is the uh, pleated sheets are circular and then it goes into a mature or the three prime structure and it folds in the way it normally would fold due to the subtle charges that are present in the R groups of the each of the amino acids strategically placed in that protein uh, to do work that was designed for so heme for an example is the good one to use has four subunits and uh, each holding a particular iron molecule uh, in the midst of the uh, heme group and that's what uh, either carries oxygen or CO, uh, CO2 uh, in and out of the tissues as a result of that iron complex being held by uh, each of the sub protein subunits so here's a very interesting study this has been studied for a long time and uh, I've actually I've printed this as a protein uh, it, it, part of my set there you can uh, look at that so translation is the second step in the two-step process by which information is carried in DNA and directs the synthesis of proteins in translation the information from a gene that has been encoded in the nucleotide sequence of messenger RNA is read and the ingredients present in the cell cytoplasm are used to produce a protein so there you go that tells you a little bit about what's going on in terms of uh, the expressing of a gene and next time I'll pick up and we'll talk about a little bit more of expression and regulation part of that uh, equation uh, in part three so please uh, be safe and take care and I hope this section made uh, good sense to you